Aliza Sherman. I'm the CEO of Elementa. And with me is Wendy Borman. And so if you could do a quick roll call, since we're all on video at the moment, because they're going to see us and they should know who we are. So Wendy, AC, Danielle, in that order, just say your name and, and uh, what your company is. Hi, I'm Wendy Borman. I'm the director of Mary Jane's The Women of Weed. Hi, I'm AC Braddock, and I'm the CEO of Eden Labs. And I'm Daniela Spinell. I'm the founder of Cana Latino. Fantastic. Well, let's get started. This is actually the first time I've done the slides, and you can see me at the same time. So here we go. First, I just want to thank Wendy for participating in this with us as a, a partner in telling the stories of women in the cannabis industry. We both feel very passionate about making sure women are recognized and hearing our voices and especially uniting our voices. So the film, if you haven't seen it, you will be seeing clips today. It features these amazing interviews with incredible women. Uh, she calls these women puffragettes uh, and you'll be seeing a lot more of puffragettes in a moment. And she explores every aspect of the industry from a female point of view. So it's just a great film. I got a chance to see it here in Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm just excited. I've known Wendy for quite a while. Uh, back when she had a documentary film that she was promoting called The Eyes of Thailand, correct? Yeah, about elephants in Thailand. So... From elephants, elephants to landmines. Yeah, yeah. So we've, we've gone from landmines to cannabis. <laughs> I know, exactly. Well, <laughs> that was incredibly moving. This is an incredibly powerful documentary. And we've got some of the ladies from there. We'll be talking with them in a little bit. But I wanted to just say, as always, when we do these webinars or online events, it's about empowering you with better information about cannabis specifically for health and wellness, but this one's gonna be a little bit broader, pun intended. We're gonna be talking also about the industry, sort of whatever comes up. And then we want to be able to introduce you to the women who are helping to bring quality products to you. So I did wanna say, don't leave, be here at the end of this event because uh, one lucky winner is going to win this fabulous gift set, a bracelet. Oh, you got it there. Are you uh, wearing yeah. yours? Oh, I'm not, I'm actually not wearing them yet. <laughs> You're but... not modeling it tonight. Okay. <laughs> no Vanna tonight. <laughs> no Vanna. So we've got a necklace and we've got a bracelet. that says Puffragette on it. So one lucky winner is going to get one of these. And I also wanted to tell you about my company, Elementa. We love hosting these. We do uh, events every month online, but we also do events offline where women come together. We call them women's wellness circles to speak openly about cannabis for health and wellness, to learn from one another, to learn from experts, and to discover new products. So we do these educational events, we do uh, the webinars, we do the film screenings, and we do those in-person ones in over 60 cities across North America right now. By the way, we'll be in Sydney, Australia soon and London, England. Let's get out there in Melbourne too. And the other thing that we do on the business side is we work with brands and educate them about how to reach women effectively uh, with, uh, with respect, with quality products that actually serve them in their multi multifaceted lives. So meaning us, we have multifaceted lives. We're taking care of kids, our partners. We're taking care of our aging parents at this stage in our lives. We need to take care of ourselves. And so we're the best consumer for this cannabis industry. Uh, right now, CBD is all the rage. What is that all about? Well, we make sure that we work with brands who are trusted, who test their products, and who have a great ethos and believe in empowering women. So that's what my company is all about. And I have to plug my book. I have to do it. <laughs> this is my 12th book. It's called Cannabis and CBD for Health and Wellness. It's all part of that mission to educate people uh, about how cannabis can be used to improve our health and can be used in acute situations, chronic situations. It's that beginner's guide, but anybody could learn something from it. So there, I plugged the book. <laughs> anyway, I wanna go uh, straight to 
the introduction for the film clip that we are about to see. So I'm turning things over now to Wendy. She's going to tell you what this first clip is. First clip is me actually getting some advice about how to use cannabis. Um, prior to this documentary, I had actually never used cannabis. I had really absorbed that messaging that uh, cannabis is a gateway drug. And in fact, when I was going to school, we were still calling it marijuana, right? Because um, that was the just, right? Yeah, that was the just say no messaging that we heard with D.A.R.E. So um, it actually took me interviewing 40 women from 10 different states over the course of a year and a half and to finally start stripping away that messaging um, and I realized that, okay, I'm finally curious to try cannabis, but I needed some advice. So this clip comes just over half the halfway point in the film. Um, and afterwards, we will talk to two of the lovely women in the film, AC and Danielle, because they are some of my cannabis fairy godmothers who helped educate and enlighten me in a very gentle way so we could do this film. I've actually never consumed cannabis. So I'm doing this film and I've never consumed cannabis. <laughs> so what do you recommend? Because I really don't know where to start. I recommend you start very slowly <laughs> and not plan to go anywhere that evening. Okay. Ask for something that's maybe not too high in THC and maybe with a CBD hybrid. So uh, maybe a one-to-one -one blend and that'll give you a nice balanced experience. I really do think that topical applications are the gateway to acceptance Absolutely. to the rest of cannabis. For one thing, pain is the common denominator, yeah. generationally. You know, the amount of times I've had that conversation with, you know, often a woman, you know, in her 50s or early 60s, and she's like, oh, I went into, I went into a store. It wasn't yeah. for me. <laughs> I went into a store, and I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. And, well, I got it home, and I decided. <laughs> I've had a couple women that are about that age, about that demographic, that have maybe tried a few things at home, but they're like afraid to go into a store by themselves. And so they've been like, will you come to a shop with me and just kind of like be a personal mm, shopper, yeah. like just take them around the store. Yeah. A topical application will help them with their aches and pains without creating an intoxication. Right. Yeah. I think that we should, though, touch on edibles just for a second. Yeah. Because yeah. we I haven't talked about idea. that. Because edibles, are, it's, it's one of these things that people so easily, like, they might take a little piece of candy if they're not going to, you know, smoke a joint. So edibles, just teeny, even if it says 10 milligrams and you should only do that, I would say start with half of that or a quarter Five. of that. And I think that's part of the reason why, like, I haven't tried it because... I didn't necessarily want to be couch locked, you know, all weekend. You know, it's like I have shit to do. I right. can't really do right. that in my life. Um, and the other thing is, there's a lot of addiction in my family. Mm -hmm. right. You know, for alcoholism, to needle drugs, to all kinds of things. And so, just hearing that it was a gateway drug as a kid, I was like, well, I don't want to flip that switch. Mm -hmm. You know, and now that I've learned about it, going, wow, that's not actually the gateway drug. I kind of feel like now's the time to yeah. try it. I think yeah. that by the time this film's over, that it's absolutely <laughs> yeah. 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 safe, you know? Just yeah. have a few people over that, you know. Have some fairy godmothers. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, girls have been doing that for ages, right? I am taking the advice of starting low and going slow, and I'm going to use a topical. So this is cannabis oil. There's CBD and some THC in it, but they tell me I cannot get high by using it on my skin. The directions are really easy. It says put it where it hurts. So I slept wrong on my neck, so I've kind of got a kink in it. So I'm just going to roll this on, start the timer, and we're going to see if this works. I'm going to put some there because that's where I noticed the pain. Okay. And I'm starting the timer. Okay, so it is just over three minutes. And oh my god, I am so stoned.
I'm just kidding. I'm not stoned at all. <laughs> but I can tell you that the kink that I was feeling in my neck, I don't feel it anymore. So before I was struggling with some neck mobility and like now I can get this much range of motion. So it's pretty amazing to me. I love that this doesn't smell like that skunky cannabis smell, nor does it have that like spicy, hot kind of smell of other topicals. Um, it's not warm, it's not cool, it's not uncomfortable at all. Um, and I mean, the texture of it, it's gonna fully absorb in my skin. They tell me this works better because it's working with my endocannabinoid system to work on the cellular level to decrease pain and inflammation. So I call this a win. I like that this is a cannabis product and it worked for me medicinally. So I'm actually pretty intrigued to try it recreationally and see how that works for me. Welcome back, ladies. All right. That so was fun. a great clip. That was hilarious. I'm so stoned. I'm so stoned. <laughs> so that was so great. I had, I had to put a joke like that in there. <laughs> Everyone's kind of waiting to see what's, what would happen. So I felt like well, I needed to. I have to tell you though, so here I was getting into the cannabis industry about three years ago and heard about CBD oil and bought some, a topical. Actually, no, I think I got it for free at a conference, a sample. And I had never heard of CBD. Mm -hmm. I hadn't yet really started trying cannabis uh, medicinally and I hadn't really tried cannabis for, except for a handful of times since college. So I have CBD oil. And I, I remember going camping and I was going to use it and I was afraid I was going to get high. I mean, I, it's just in your brain, logically, it doesn't make any sense that if I were to apply this oil onto my neck that I'm going to get high, but I genuinely thought I was, I hadn't mm -hmm. seen your film or anything like that. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so I don't think that's unusual. I think that we've been so bombarded with misinformation that that the first time can be scary. Ladies, I don't mm -hmm. know if you want to, I mean, we've just seen Win Wendy's first time, <laughs> but if you feel comfortable talking about sort of your first time either experiencing cannabis or even CBD, um, what was that like? Do either of you uh, want to volunteer your story? I can totally go for it. Uh, it's a little bit rude because I am from Venezuela, so in Latin America, the culture of marijuana is even farther, you know, like super, super scary. You don't have friends that smoke marijuana because they're not, you know, <laughs> they're bad people. So I tried it when I was 18 with my mom. <laughs> she gave it to me. Whoa, she's this is drug and I want to know, you know, like, I'm like, but why? You know, she didn't say anything else anymore. Um, so I, I'm a patient for PTSD and also for fibromyalgia and a lot of things. So I started taking a lot of painkillers. Mm -hmm. And when I moved here to Colorado, a doctor told me, please look for help. You live in a state where cannabis is legal. Please look for help because mm -hmm. we're killing you. Mm -hmm. And that's when I go to the doctor and I really try, you know, the cannabis and the power of cannabis. But I went as a care you know like I was 30 something I, and I was like oh my god this is and what is this and, and calling all my friends and do you know how you try it you've been smoking your whole life what do you feel you know <laughs> <laughs> and what did you try your first time like what what form was it with smoke with just smoking okay smoke, we sit with a with a couch potato you know like a, a, back, a box of ice cream <laughs> <gasps> okay, AC, I don't know if this is a story for you. I don't, we could talk about something else. Uh, no, mine was a quintessential uh, early teens, skipping school and have, trying it for the first time and playing Frisbee. <laughs> playing Frisbee, that's awesome. I mean, it's just a, it's a quintessential story. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty much it. Yeah, and, uh, that's... That's so, so my high school experience though was, I remember Jennifer Taylor, if she's watching. Hi, Jennifer. Uh-oh, Jennifer. 
<laughs> calling her out while well, she's she's proud about that uh that and she just showed me what a pipe was and she showed me what a bong was and um and then I ended up getting a job in a head shop which these days are called smoke shops so yeah I had a interesting high school and college years myself so what would your advice be we'll kind of start with Wendy then go to AC then Danielle what would your advice be to someone who uh, is going to try cannabis for the very first time. What would you suggest? So, Wendy, what? Well, I really took the advice to heart that everybody had shared with me. Um, so, starting with the topical seemed like the most logical thing for me to do. Um, and what's funny is between that and the next clip that you see, um, where I actually try vaping and I try an edible in, in the film. Um, I actually gave a CBD treat to my dog. <laughs> and I, I monitored her. <laughs> like, I felt a little bad that it was like animal testing, but she's a high needs dog. She's an older dog. She has diabetes and cataracts and like all kinds of other things. And everybody said it was completely safe for her. And I was able to buy that in a pet food store in Colorado, right? So I, I started with that. She loved it. She was mellow. It took away any like separation anxiety, like all the other stuff. Um, and at that point, um, I, de I decided to consume, um, not just topically, but I'll tell you now, um, I still use the topical rollerball every day. I mean, I have old injuries you know, and getting older, everything starts to hurt. So just having a way to um, deal with that without having to keep popping, you know, Tylenol, Aleve, everything like that, that I was supposed to is great. Yeah, that, that is definitely something that I do too. I have a little roll on too. The roll ons are great because they're not messy and they can just get mm -hmm. to the exact spot you want. Mm -hmm. Back to the pets, just really quick for anyone who is not familiar, CBD is okay for your pet. THC is not. THC. According um, to who? Well, oh, well, then here we go. That's a good, that's you, a good You've point. got a scientist on the on with well, us, then, Aliza. Then, then I want you to tell us now, this wasn't supposed to be about pets, but you know what? We all have our, our pets and we, we, we should know this. Actually, oh, I love this. I love learning something new and I actually hate passing out misinformation so school me educate me here please um well i i'm just I, that's a real question according to who oh i thought you were gonna tell us um, no, no well, i mean according I, to veterinarians who are right now prescribing cbd to dogs yeah but and, where are they getting this information mm, that's a good point i mean okay I, this, I, it was a loaded question i'll give you that okay. so I mean, I think it's really important here to understand that this hesitancy to try this plant is a product of prohibition. Correct. Right? We so agree. the only reason we hear about CBD, 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 and THC, 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 is because of prohibition. There are over 400 components in this plant, and we have used them hum as humans for thousands and thousands and thousands of years perfectly safely it's a medicinal plant so this this fear comes from politics it's not from science and that's something that's the very first thing i would tell anyone is just just forget about everything you've heard and just research human medicinal science and the endocannabinoid system because even going into a a retail store and talking to somebody there it's very likely they're not going to be that well educated either there are very few retail stores who educate their um, bud tenders so um, thank you for having this so that we can talk about it <laughs> well, you bring up some really really good points though we are in an age where that we've had decades of misinformation decades of propaganda that it has, is, there's agendas behind it. And, and the greatest motivation behind those agendas is greed. Yep. So it has nothing to do with, and if you think, if you really want to talk, you know, from a <laughs> female point of view, women were healers. 
That's right. Women are healers, but through ancient times were healers, the midwives uh, using cannabis from uh, during pregnancy for, for women, uh, during labor, postpartum, mm -hmm. and even midwifery was sort of pulled out of our culture mm -hmm. by, uh, by Western medicine. That's right. And, and so I, there's a lot of, so you, there's that whole deep uh, sort of the societal and cultural uh, aspect. There's the social justice aspect. I mean, we are all, we were looking over our shoulders thinking we'd get arrested if we, if we tried something or if we were caught with something and here's good medicine. So it's really complicated. And so someone who's trying it for the first time probably comes to this with that history. And, mm -hmm. and it's almost uh, the word cellular comes to mind too. It's sort of like the cellular memory of uh, this is wrong, this is bad, this is criminal, this is dangerous, and it's hard to shake. Now, here I am, three years into this uh, whole industry, and I'm terrified half the time. I'm, I'm worried I'm going to get caught. It's mm -hmm. still there. It's sort of cellular. It's no longer, like, logical, but it's sort of this visceral feeling, mm -hmm. even when it does good. Mm -hmm. So I, what do you think about the idea of starting with topicals? Was that sort of a a weak entry into it or is that a good way for people to enter oh, i think it's a great entry yeah, yeah. this way so one of the things that i've learned and see if you all have some further knowledge about this is there's a pretty big difference between topical and transdermal and i don't think a lot of people understand that so when you say a topical which could have any combination of cannabinoids. Again, most people say THC topical, CBD topical, or uh, something that's full spectrum or broad spectrum, meaning it has much more of the plant, so a much fuller array of cannabinoids. But if it's a topical, it does sort of lay the, on the surface of your skin, and it could help with maybe some surface or close to the surface joint pain or muscle pain. So but the it's difference it's is the topical and transdermal is topical is, is more located. Transdermal, you put it on and it transfers to other areas. So it sinks in and moves through your system a little bit. So it you, enters your bloodstream, breaks the blood brain barrier? Yeah, that's, that's kind of like the thing. It gets into your blood uh, mm -hmm. basal. So it gets into your system. So if you also have a test of THC that some um, works through that as well, you can get having patches or any transdermal, some amount of THC in your urine, even if you don't smoke. But with the, with the topicals, you're never going to have that because they're not going to penetrate enough to get into your, your bloodstream. Yeah, into your bloodstream. And so in order for some, a topical to turn into a transdermal, it has some kind of additional, uh, some, some terpenes can make it absorb more deeply. Um, oleic acid, I believe, is one of the things that you might add. Uh, because a lot of us are familiar with transdermal patches, like a nicotine uh, cessation patch, a pain relief patch. Yeah, Wendy, yeah. Well, She's raising her hand. Yeah, I know. I hi. Um, well, I can just give an example because I, I've used both. Um, so I actually had my tonsils out last year, and if you think it's painful as a child, I guess it's even more painful as an adult. Um, and I actually spoke to AC before I had surgery, um, and she kind of coached me through not just taking CBD, making sure I took. Um, some THC, but instead of topicals, I opted for a transdermal patch because I wanted a boost, um, especially if I was going to try to sleep through the, the night. Um, mm. I didn't want to wake up in the middle of the night and have to, you know, start pain meds all over again and getting out of sync and all, all that nonsense. Um, and what was interesting, it, as a side note, um, I walked in to I had to show up in person to get my um, uh, opioids that they were going to prescribe to me. And so I had a huge bottle. It was literally this tall. Cool. Um, and they said, don't get addicted. 
And I immediately <laughs> said, I want to take as little of this as possible. Um, and thankfully, I was able to, because I was in a legal state, I was in Colorado at the time, I was able to go to a dispensary and talk to a bud tender and say, this, I'm going into surgery in two days. I don't want to take all of my hydrocodone. What do I do instead? Um, and thankfully, they were able to kind of coach me through what to buy. And, the and patch, now there is a law in Colorado okay. that allows you to have, if you are prescribed by an Oxycodone or any opioid, uh, the, the more than 72 hours, you can choose to have cannabis, a temporary license as well to go That's through, great. yeah, to get yeah. your medication because they, can, they, they prove that after 72 hours, you are addicted to heroin. And who wants to do that to a kid, for example? Mm -hmm. Whoa. So um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the Lancet. It's a medical journal. L-A-N-C-E-T? Yeah. So in 1889, there was an article in the Lancet about cannabis use to help wean people off of opiates and mm -hmm. to um, address nausea. Mm -hmm. 1889. Mm -hmm. And of so, course, why don't we know about yeah. these things when we know why we Propaganda don't. and prohibition. And uh, our wonderful President Nixon, who scheduled it um, the way he did. Yep. And we all know why Nixon did that, because um, the whole part of this cannabis um, culture for many of the people who are in business in it is because it, is, um, it cures not only physical ills, but also a lot of social ills. And that also includes people who are imprisoned and still are in prison. Um, mm. And so there were people who didn't agree with uh, Nixon's politics who were people of color and hippies. So he purposely did this to schedule it to disrupt their communities. And so thousands and thousands and thousands of people have been harmed and have died because of this. So uh, when you're imbibing, not only are you imbibing for your health and wellness, but you are hopefully also supporting businesses who give back to these issues. Yes. Absolutely. And that's definitely something we talked about last night. Um, yeah. You know, I, I decided when I was going to purchase cannabis for the first time to uh, go to a dispensary with, uh, that Wanda James owned um, in Denver, Colorado, because she... Simply Pure, right? Simply, Simply pure. pure, yes. Specifically because social justice is integral to her business model. And there are other dispensaries that give back to communities in, in similar ways um, mm -hmm. in different states. Um, but I knew that if I was choosing to use cannabis for the first time at age 37, I wanted to purchase something that reflected my values. Good for yeah. you. So, awesome. Way to go, Wendy. Thanks. <laughs> so that Hi, scene Wendy. we showed last night and kind of... Um, sets up this next scene that we we can watch tonight um which is me actually per um using the canvas that i purchased so if we have new people tonight that weren't here last night um i ended up purchasing a gram of flour so dried cannabis uh, dried cannabis bud um and then i purchased an edible um and so in this next scene you're gonna see danielle and some other wonderful cannabis fairy godmothers um you'll see wanda and jamie from last from last night's um panel uh in the scene as well kind of coaching me through how to use it for the first time sure that volume is on it's on this time let's do it okay this is really exciting i just legally purchased my first cannabis ever but I would be breaking the law if I tried to consume this on the street because there's no social consumption laws in Denver. Plus, I don't own my own home, so I legally can't consume it where I live. So I'm gonna go over to a friend's house so I can legally consume my cannabis. Let's go. Instead of my deflowering, this is my flowering. Of course it, is so it is. Of, flowers in my hair. of course it is. It is fantastic. <laughs> so I'm really excited that all of you are joining me for my first cannabis consumption experience. So Wendy, what is your mom gonna think about all this? They started giving me advice when I said, Well, the time's coming, I'm finally gonna try cannabis. My mom was like, Well, if you 
smoke and drink, you're just gonna wanna have sex. <laughs> I'm excited, I'm not nervous, I'm like, let's, let's, let's do it. It's like prom night, let's, let's just do it, right? Let's do it. So I'm gonna take a quarter bite of this, and then I was told to do like a one 1,000 puff. <laughs> All right, so here I go. Wendy's first time. <gasps> oh, no! She's taking the leap. <laughs> Baby's first edible. <laughs> It tastes, it tastes delicious. Good. That's the danger, right? Yeah, we gotta like push those away to really somebody else. Right now, yeah. <laughs> Take them away. Um, okay, so the good thing about this device, they tell me, because I've not even inhaled like tobacco smoke, that if I were to just do a joint or something right away, I would okay. probably cough. And I don't want to have a bad experience. So if I do this, it just heats it up to room temperature, right? Well, it heats it up, but then it goes into a balloon and returns quickly to room temperature. Okay. Yay! Go, 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 go. Clear. Yeah. Okay, okay. So tonight we have a balloon, okay? Um, and we're gonna put a mouthpiece back on, okay? I feel like I kinda wanna show you instead. Yeah, you show yeah. me first. You can uh, you can try some of my skunk berry. <laughs> so you're you're gonna inhale and then when you, after you take it away from your mouth, inhale again. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, just double down. Because people don't realize they say just a really deep breath, but then they're like <gasps> and they fill their mouth with nothing. Smoke. But then you need to Basically okay, swallowing. so like do a half, like an inhale. Watch me. I'm going okay. back. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm okay. learning by I'm watching. Gonna, I'm going to be exaggerating. Okay, sorry. Okay. I think I can do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 You okay. And I don't have to hold or squeeze or anything. No, no. Okay. It tastes kind of like berry, herby. Yeah, and that's why, that's why I that's why like vaping because it brings out like all those properties that you usually burn off. So yeah. how are you feeling? <laughs> so I'm feeling a little like buzz, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily like a heart flutter, like anxiety thing though. It's more like my fingertips are kind of like yeah. a little electric. Notice your eyes a little bit red. Yes. Already? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like you got it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. No, it's my Maybe. first time consuming it. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Mine too. Yeah. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. But what was the turning point for why? you decided to consume tonight on oh. camera. It, I, what it was for me is that there was so much stigma to me constantly fighting to not be that stoner, mm -hmm. to not be perceived as a stoner, and this being a new industry, and, and to be a female, I guess. So she must smoke weed must if she's in the business, yeah. right? Yeah. But why did you decide? It's not like anybody didn't know I got high, but I didn't know if the image of you getting high yeah, was, it, yeah. was, was going to be a, a thing or not. Mm -hmm. And then to get to a point where I have been this year, I mean, I've got no more fucks left to give. <laughs> 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 I have no more fucks left. I, I, I really do. Okay, so it's been well over an hour, so I'm feeling like I could probably do another baby puff. What? Cannabis Fairy Godmothers? I think it's Thumbs up? Two thumbs up? Two thumbs up? Two thumbs up? Yep, two thumbs up. All right, okay. This is okay. Good job. And you came out! I saw it! I'm a puffragette now! Finally! I got it! She is. And scene, right? I mean, what I love about this experience um, mainly is that like we're in a safe environment mm -hmm. it's around all supportive people um, and sorry I got distracted by fire <laughs> 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 I'm so amazingly proud of you, though, and Thank I'm so you. amazingly proud of the journey that you've done. I think this is only the beginning, to start, right? To start the next <laughs> chapter of the journey. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's a life-changing moment, right? Ladies, bring it in. Okay, Puffer Jets on three.
to our video and our conversation and we'll be taking some questions in a moment from some of you out there so here Seems we Seems like everybody loved that scene based on the chat <laughs> <laughs> that was great it was great so you chose an edible and vaping and i found that a little bit interesting like even i would well come to think of it for sleep, for sleep, I would puff once or twice and then take an edible because the, the vaping for me would take me down of a couple of notches, mellow me out, prepare me for sleep. And then the edible lasts or it starts to kick in a little bit later and helps me stay asleep. But from an from your standpoint, yeah, so, it so looks sleepy. <laughs> right, I didn't. Um, so the reason um, I went with vaping, then trying a little bit of an edible um, first, was I'd never felt high before. And so the advice I was given um, was to try vaping so I could have that initial sensation mm -hmm. where, you know, my fingertips felt kind of a buzz. Um, I had a little heart flutter, but it wasn't like anxiety producing. Um, so I knew that that's what high meant, right? Or elevated meant. So when the edible kicked in, because that can be anywhere from an hour to four hours in my experience, I would know what that kind of extra boost was mm -hmm. so I could gauge how I was feeling. Um, so in that scene, you know, I waited an an hour um, and we filmed that whole time. I hadn't tried anything else. Um, and so I asked like, hey, do you guys think I could try a little bit more? And everybody said, yes, absolutely, go for it. Um, and I trusted them. So I, I took another baby puff off of um, the baby. And that was, uh, that was also the fl more flour. It wasn't a water bong. There was a question about that. Um, and you know, we can talk later about the difference between flowers and concentrates and things like that. You know, um, AC and Danielle are definitely more of the experts than I am in that um, area. But I felt I enjoyed the experience. I was safe. And honestly, it happened that Danielle was lighting a joint and just <laughs> seeing fire distracted me. So at that point, I knew what, okay, now, now Wendy's stoned. And that was a very authentic moment. And, you know, that, that's not something I do now. I don't consume cannabis to the point of being stoned. Um, I might do it to the point where I'm kind of silly and giggly and happy. Um, that's and kind of stoned. That's done. <laughs> well, but, but not to the point right. that I'm like couch locked. Right. You know, all I'm doing is laughing. I can't talk. You know, <laughs> like some of the th experiences I've seen other people have at parties, and that had like turned me off. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. I mean, well, that's the difference in the chemo bar, not not a definition whether you're stoned or not. That's right. So, and by the way, uh, chemo bar for everybody. That's the, the much better scientific term strain is I, I had a botanist tell me strain is for bacteria <laughs> it's not for the plant so well the problem is in uh, retail um to, in particular really just in the industry in general they'll have different strains um but you don't they'll call it you know car park next door and <laughs> and then somebody else will like Oh, well, that's really selling well, really well. We'll take this and we'll call it car park next door. And mm -hmm. so what ends up happening is you have no idea actually what it is you're imbibing. Um, so what a lot of uh, more forward thinking companies are doing is they're actually putting on their um, packaging. And this is what you should look for when you're buying. And that is the top five terpenes and the top five um, Cannabinoids, cannabinoids yeah. because the chemovar yeah. is the chemical makeup of the plant as opposed mm -hmm. to just calling it indica and sentiva, which doesn't really mean anything anymore. Right. So we all read labels. So we just have to get used to reading labels of what we are imbibing with cannabis. And if you are someplace and all you have is sentiva and indica, then you need to be a consumer that educates 
their retail store <laughs> to say, I well, want to know it, more it. about what is in here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that a, a smart consumer is someone who advocates for themselves, who can go in and ask the questions and also demand, demand the test to see the test results mm -hmm. uh, and, and to make sure that the products have been tested and mm -hmm. that they're, how they're there's extracted. proper, how they're extracted, proper labeling. I mean, these are, uh, I'm guessing these are some of the things you talked about, Wendy, last night in terms of how to buy it and what to look for. Yeah, we, we touched on that um, last night, but it, you know, we, we probably have some new people joining us tonight, so I think it's great to touch on it again, especially because, you know, a AC uh, didn't mention what Eden Labs does, but it's what uh, I think the premier extraction company for uh, nice. used yeah. for all types of essential oils, but people also use it for cannabis. So yeah, we're she, uh, actually celebrating our 25th year in cannabis extraction. Wow, Congrats. that's oh, fantastic. So tell us a little bit then too, because you did mention extraction and I had heard that, you know, not solvent less extraction processes or CO2 extraction are the things that you might want to look for, but you're there in the lab. What, what do you recommend that a consumer looks, look for in terms of the extraction process? Well, it's very difficult because, um, what people call solventless um, has many definitions, um, yeah. but what you want to definitely be sure to have is um, something that you can see the test results on. And the for reason we primary utilize um, CO2 and ethanol is because they are, they're used in other botanical um, extractions. They are, um, CO2, for instance, is a, is a sanitizer. I mean, it will, it's an antibacterial. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they use it to sterilize organs before they put them in your body. So whatever, it's, it's a very, very clean, pure process. And as is ethanol, but they, they make different products. And the light hydrocarbons are okay too. The problem is you don't know if, you, if they have taken all the solvent back out of the material. Got so it. it's it says those solvents, those light hydrocarbons bind to the plant material and it's very difficult to get them out unless it's done right. But if it's done right, then you That's don't perfect. have solvent in your extract. But especially mm -hmm. in an unregulated market, it's very difficult to find, you know, a company that it goes above and beyond um, and tend to know who that is. I mean, they exist, no. but how, how are you going to know? Well, and that is one of the biggest problems for Latin America and, mm -hmm. and the rest of the, of the world. You know, like if you're not Israel or United States, your knowledge of how to make extraction is, you know, very basic. And you have a few companies that are doing that. And a lot of people that are doing this extraction in their houses. Wow. I, and, and, and it's dangerous because they're saying they're making, you know, like ed even edibles from those uh you know, concentrates that are given to people. And I lied once in a, in a conference in Colombia, and it was like a sparkle for the 4th of July. I was <laughs> like, dude, you cannot this, give this to people. You're going to kill it in a second. And people watch videos online on YouTube about how to do their recipes and how to do their concentrate. And, and there's also super dangerous to work that in the home type of, you know, environment. I think after topicals, what I suggest to people that they use is the tincture. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Right, because it's in, you know, it's an alcohol extraction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the um, chlorophyll is removed out. So it's a like golden oil. Sometimes the chlorophyll is left in. A lot of patients like left, leave the chlorophyll in there. But um, it's very measurable. Mm -hmm. So you can take a couple of drops and then try that and, and continue to, to go to, you know, take more if you want to. And so you don't end up with an, like an edible where you might, I mean, that is the biggest problem usually with cannabis, right? Is people who have had a bad experience with edibles. Mm -hmm. And that has happened to me twice in my lifetime. And it is not a pleasant experience. Mm -hmm. um, it can make you afraid to try again, but I, using a tincture, that's very controllable. 
That's a great suggestion. And I never even really think of that. Uh, but now that CBD has become incredibly popular and everywhere, that's usually the form that you see um, mm -hmm. first is now there's a lot of other ingestibles. I, that's uh, you know what I actually want. Let's take some questions. Do we have some questions, Erica? I mean, everyone's kind of commenting and and uh, sharing some of their stories. Yeah, the the chat uh, has oh, really. I see one about ethanol here. It says I thought okay. ethanol was always dirty. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why what dirty means or why they would say that. I mean, the only Maybe thing that toxic. I can think. Maybe the only toxic. thing that I can think of is because ethanol is a, uh, an exhaustive extraction, which means it pulls everything out of the plant. So the chlorophyll, everything. So it's a very dark, dark green oil. Um, but that doesn't mean it's dirty. It just means it has chlorophyll in it, which is, you know, actually. Sometimes good. good. <laughs> so I mean, it's not a bad thing. People just want <laughs> clear oil. So they take the uh, chlorophyll out and some people don't like the taste of it. Um, mm. But ethanol has been used historically to extract everything. I mean, every botanical yeah. you can imagine. So and here's another question. Pick up a sample, you find the alcohol with marijuana where the old ladies, you know, the grandmothers, they swear that that is not marijuana. That's a recipe that it cures different things, but it's, it's the and, tonic. And you it's the tonic. <laughs> the tonic is the tonic. Well, that's the thing too. So um, any of us from Hispanic backgrounds know that there's several different camps. There's the, it's the devil's weed. Then there's the, it's something that grandma grows in the uh, garden, but nobody says what it is, but she gives it to you in a tea or she gives it to you in a tincture or she, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. Uh, so another question you said, Erica? Yeah, we have one that we, uh, came earlier on uh, in our broadcast. Um, the question is, would a good quality full spectrum CBD work in a roller bottle as well? I guess she was talking about when uh, Wendy applied the topical and does it need uh, the THC to work topically? Question. Such a good question. So, uh, one of the things, so first of all, AC, I bet you'll mm -hmm. have something to say about this, but my understanding is that if we're just talking CBD and THC, that CBD with a little bit, at least some THC is going to be far more effective. Um, yes, no? Yes, Perfect. absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, okay. THC has historically been used for pain, historically. Um, CBD is good for inflammation, which creates pain, but they're kind of, you know, two different things really. But, um, and it's really a shame that THC is being demonized the way it is still um, as the recreational uh, part, which I hate that term. It should be lifestyle. Um, but yeah, oh, it's up here in Alaska, it's called adult use. Yeah. And that's not good either because then you have a whole bunch of children who are sick who need to use it. So then it's, you know, discriminating against them and that's not good either so yeah. uh, i like lifestyle because then that translates to conscious consumption mm, nice mm -hmm. that's right? excellent. So there are okay. a lot of people who are consuming because they don't want to you know drink alcohol they want don't want to take opiates they they mm -hmm. use it to um before they do exercising like with thcv is really stimulating um so and appetite suppressing and appetite yeah. suppressing or appetite increasing mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, so and yeah. you mentioned something too. You you were saying that uh, for pain, a THC is really the analgesic, whereas CBD is the anti-inflammatory. Same thing for sleep. People keep on thinking they can take CBD for sleep. Yeah. CBD is the anti-anxiety. So if you have racing mind and anxiousness before trying to get to sleep, it can be beneficial, but it doesn't. It's not a sedative in the way that THC is the sedative. Well, CBN, or CBN is, is really right? the so, yeah. And CBN is what, what all of these break down into as they age. Mm -hmm. And it takes about two years naturally, but you can speed up this process to create CBN. And that is the thing that's for a, sleep. That's the sedative for sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and why so, there are not more CBN products on the market? 
Oh, there are some though. There are. I some. know, but there are so few. So few. I mean, I mean, it would be the very, if I had a, a company, it would be the very first thing that I would make. <laughs> Everyone needs to sleep better. And why they like on every store and every shelf. I just, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. If you can sleep better, if you can get a good night's sleep, it helps with everything from inflammation to anxiety to yeah. appetite to all of it, to cope, just simply coping with stress. Yeah. Agreed. And being able so, to function as a human being. What was that? And being able to function as a human being. Yeah. You know, because your brain is, it's the, the, you know, your master machine there you have to make it address that that was my first uh problem when i was even little i did not sleep wow. um in my kid and you know it's the same and i ended up realizing that i was under the spectrum of autism when i was 27 <laughs> but and, and i had i was taking so many antidepressants so many anti so many pills to sleep even when i was pregnant with my kid because i couldn't and for me, the real thing, the first thing that life, that is life changing, it was, I was able to sleep mm. with cannabis. And that was all, that's how I start the healing process. I, I have, I, I have my brain back to think, how am I going to heal the rest of my body? <laughs> I think it's really important here because I'm also seeing some things on here on the um, questions, but this is really point, important to point out that CBD is not a cure-all. I mean, they're That's putting it, they're thing. putting it into Carl's Jr.'s burgers for God's sakes. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, it's gimmicks at this point. It's nothing but gimmicks. And, and the amount that they're putting into your consumer goods is not even a therapeutic amount. No, it's minuscule. And so what's going to happen is they're going to damage the industry mm -hmm. that they're trying to make money in um, by creating snake oil. Basically, people will try it and it's not going to do anything. Um, well, it's certainly not going to yeah. do everything that they're saying it's going to do because, you know, that's what whole plant does. So, okay, that was the other piece of this. Uh, full spectrum, broad spectrum, or even whole plant. Again, I, I'll always say my understanding is, because if somebody knows better, but full spectrum versus broad. So full spectrum would include THC, broad spectrum would not but it means that you're extracting using more of the parts of the plant and you're not pulling out and isolating any cannabinoid or, or terpene. You're just using that everything that nature sort of intended. And it's, it's all there in your tincture or when you're smoking flour, it's all there, but also with um, some combust, some combustibles, uh, some burning product, <laughs> side product up. Oh, I'm losing the word. So, yeah, so do you all have a clear definition of full spectrum versus broad spectrum? They're, I don't know what they're trying to do with that. Potato, um, potato? It, I mean, full spectrum is full spectrum. That means everything that was in the plant is in the extract. Um, it's it's going to be in a different amount, so obviously, because it's a concentrate. Um, and depending on the extraction methodology, you might lose some things. But um, what they're trying to do, by having these misinformation kind of definitions is um, they're creating isolates. An isolate is a single molecule. It's an isolated molecule. And then a distillate uh, will remove things like fats and wads because it also can separate out different molecules as well. But um, distillate be became a thing um, and the 2012, 2013, um, because some guys were having, were, had a bunch of bad extractions with their BHO. So they had to figure out a way to clean it up because they didn't want to lose the money. So they cleaned it up and now that is distillate. Oh, and so they take that, but because what happens with that is it removes some of the things and it removes all the terpenes and the wow. terpenes have a medicinal um, and psychotropic effects. And they're extremely mm -hmm. important for the entourage effect to occur. So distillate is not that wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. We promote whole plant, and that is trying to replicate the chemovar uh, in the end product so mm -hmm. that you have everything there that nature intended. And every single chemovar can, cannabis is extremely malleable in the growing process. 
So you can actually grow for higher percentages of different cannabinoids and terpene profiles. So um, that's the beautiful thing about all of this is that it is one entire process. It isn't, you take this plant, they take a bunch of stuff out of it, they put it back together over here. And cannabis um, just doesn't like to be separated. It's true because I do know that there is the, uh, is it Marinol that they give to chemo patients for anti-nausea and it is not as effective as just smoking a joint or taking a tincture. Uh, so that's, there's so many different schools of thought on it. It's going to continue to progress as the states legalize and hopefully federally legalize um, and it's going to be confusing for the consumer. It's going to be incredibly con confusing for the consumer. So we now have an opportunity to sort of set the record straight and hopefully impart better information for everybody. So yeah, Marinol is a synthetic, exactly. Trying to synthesize a plant, try to synthesize what nature, right? What and, nature you know, does. and that's what they, they want to, they want to try and do this so they can control it. I mean, the very right. first plant, that they took the strongest particle out of was, was poppies. And it mm. was uh, in 1805 and it was morphine. Yeah. And mm -hmm. from that point on, our whole medical system started ev evolving around single molecule solutions and clinical trials. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and it's, that's, that's old science, that's old. We now have in the cannabinoid system, which we are just learning about 1992 with the blink of an eye in science. Mm. and and so instead of taking apart this plant and studying it in pieces, which will take forever, mm. they should just look at it as a system treating a system. Mm. Um, and that's what really needs to happen. And it needs to happen medically as a nutraceutical and as food, which we mm. don't have a definition for in, in this country. We do in others as what a nutraceutical is. Mm. Sure. This Nature. is fascinating. Nature, nature's medicine. Yes. So and like, what I like to tell a lot of Texans is it's God's plant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, we have got, uh, well, we've actually a few minutes over time. I want to make sure that if there's any other uh, questions in there, what do we have? Anything there else? Was that... a, there was a couple quick ones. So okay. one was about um, how to store their edibles. Somebody's asking about oh. the freezer. Yes, no, quick answer, quick and short. I freeze mine. Do you? I do in a locked box. In fact, I think it's called the hush box. It's oh. a very hard plastic uh, box, which does very well in the freezer. And yeah, I freeze it's mine. <laughs> What was that? And it's child proof in a, in a, in a child proof container. Child proof container, it's locked. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it also depends on what is the edible made of. Because it can be treated as if any other food. You know, if it's a cake, you don't necessarily have to put it in, in the freezer. If it's, for example, a vegan cake and your grease is a vegetable oil, it can last longer outside of the, uh, of the fridge. But it depends on your, on your edible as well. Well, and for me, I consume very intermittently, so I do want that to last a whole lot longer if it was me using it every few weeks or something. But I think I've heard uh, it can last a few months. Uh, maybe the effectiveness might change. I don't know. Uh, AC, do you have any thoughts on freezing your edibles? I freeze my edibles, um, you know, if they're baked goods. You know, <laughs> yeah, but, baked goods. Yeah. You know, right? But again, mm -hmm. that's another reason why tincture is wonderful. If it's an alcohol yeah. tincture, it lasts mm -hmm. forever. I mean, you don't yeah. have to refrigerate it or anything. You just have it in your in my cabinet. I have like probably seven to 10 different uh, chemo bar selections in there. Um, one that makes me really happy. And like sometimes I'll take it a cocktail hour if I'm going out with my girlfriends. And other one that makes me really sleepy. Another one that makes me kind of stony. And like the description you were talking about, Wendy, where you're like, you know, the stony. Like, oh. And you know, they're, they're all fun and they're all, they all do, you know, things that I, I need at the time. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Uh, AC on the coattails to that, Stacy's asking what's the best way to learn how to make a tincture? Any, any quick and dirty answers? 
Yeah, That's I mean, alcoholic, alcoholic tincture is very easy to make. I mean, you, you can Google that. But basically for years, well, for historically, you just um, take a jar, put your cannabis in there, put some, right. um, some uh, <laughs> pure, pure green alcohol in there and shake it up and pour it out. Do you soak it though? Wouldn't you show, soak it? Um, you can soak it, but it actually, it pulls, it, it's pretty, it works pretty fast. Wow. I mean, typically I for that. years, okay. people did let them sit forever and it didn't really need to. Um, you, can, okay. you can even uh, remove that alcohol with a lower, you know, make like something more oily and that it can even be made with flowers that you soak for even half an hour. The alcohol yep. will get impregnated that fast. Oh, wow. So, and the other thing though, on the tincture front, I think I had heard that the reason a lot of these tinctures are now oil-based, which is technically not the tincture, but an oil-based solution, uh, cannabis being fat soluble, so the absorption is supposed to be better, but also alcohol. I mean, I take echinacea when I'm not feeling well and it burns if you literally put it right in your mouth. The mucous yes. membranes is very painful. So yeah. I just put drops in water or drops in tea. Yep. I'm assuming the THC or the cannabis tincture in alcohol, you would do it similarly. You would not put it in your mouth directly. Well, you can, but um, yeah, I mean, Actually, my favorite way to do it is to remove the alcohol and reintroduce it to hemp seed, to hemp oil, oh, because yeah. I, there's a synergy that happens. Nice. Somehow there's something in that hemp oil that brings an extra little fullness to the feeling um, with the hemp oil. Nice. What, what hey. happened between put it on on sublingual ways or swallow it with your teeth? it will be the time of absorption. When you go, when you go directly to a sublingual, it, it bypass your stomach and go directly to your liver. And when yeah, you swallow sense. it with your tea, it's gonna take a little longer, but it's gonna make the same effect. Great. And that's, a, that's another thing too, with um, mm -hmm. taking any kind of edible or whatever you should, if you want to have it affect you faster, then you shouldn't, you should have to do it on an empty stomach and even with the, a tincture. And if you have it with alcohol, it will push through your system faster. So if you're, hey, you know, if you're, it's a cocktail hour and you have a little bit of tincture and a glass of wine, you're probably going to feel it in 15 minutes. Wow. All right. Well, this has been fascinating. I really enjoyed the clips, Wendy. That was fun to see them again. Mm -hmm. And ladies, it was so good to hear from you. And uh, there's just so much information to share. And so it's just so important that we as consumers are educating ourselves, but that we're finding the good trusted sources of information and that we that who have the information or access to it shares that information in every possible form that we can um, and create forums like this in order to do so. So thank you so much, all thank of you, you for being here. You. This has been terrific, and a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm really glad I was able to make it. And thanks to everyone who is out there listening and who will be watching this. Again, uh, those of you who have registered, wait, we have a winner, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, I remembered. Yes, <laughs> and who is our winner? Sharon Y. Sharon Y, you will be getting an email from me. Uh, not tonight, oh, but tomorrow. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. That is what you're getting. You're getting a bracelet and a necklace, a puffer and, jet. And it says puffer jet. I don't know if I can get the shine to work on my camera through Trust my computer, it. but it oh, says puffer oh, jet. It. So. There we go. That's, oh, <laughs> lovely. That's beautiful. Awesome. It's been wonderful. Everyone have a good evening or a good morning or a good day. Uh, depending on where you're you're watching from at this moment. And as always, take good care, take good care of yourself and be empowered by this beautiful plant. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.